Squeeze 7 contains many intelligent presets that can be used in virtually any setting. Sometimes it seems that the hardest part of video encoding is choosing the right preset for the video. In this section, we'll walk through the basics of what these presets mean and when it is best to use specific presets. First, let's take a look at the default presets in Squeeze 7. We've all heard 1080p and 720p tossed around, but what does it mean? Those are the numbers of vertical pixels in the output video. The P stands for progressive, meaning that the video is not interlaced. Video at these resolutions is typically in the widescreen 16x9 format. So the 480p preset is 480 pixels vertical and 640 for 4x3 or 854 for 16x9 horizontal pixels. Now that we are in the edit preset dialog, let's dive a little deeper into what each of these presets may contain. Here in the video tab, you can see what video codec this preset uses. In this case, we're using the main concept H.264 codec. This is one of the best compression codecs available today. We can also choose from a variety of codecs to suit. Next, we can see the method by which our video is encoded. Currently, we are set to use a two-pass VBR or variable bitrate method. This means that Squeeze will pass through your video twice. This gives the encoder more accurate motion information, giving you a better encode with less data. If time's not an issue, choose multi-pass for encoding for even better results. Next is the frame rate. Here we can tell Squeeze how many frames per second we want our output to be. Typically, it's best to keep it at one encoded frame for every one frame of source video, or one to one. The data rate is how many kilobytes per second your encoded video file will be. The higher the data rate, the higher the quality, but also the larger the file. With some codecs, you can change the encoding profile. Here we are set to the high profile, or best quality. If you're encoding for devices, this should be set at baseline or main. The frame size setting tells you how big your encoded file will be. You can also choose same as source to keep it the same as the original. Keyframes are frames in which a complete image is stored in the data stream. This should typically be set to force a keyframe between every 30 to 300 frames, or between every 1 and 10 seconds. Also keep Auto Keyframe on Scene Change selected. In the Audio tab, we can view the audio codec being used. Once again, we can change the settings if we want, but the defaults have been carefully chosen for best results. In the Filters tab, we can see any default filters associated with this preset, or we can apply any of our own. The Publishing tab tells us where videos encoded with this preset will be published to. Even though we've just gone over this one QuickTime preset, the same logic applies to all the presets. Each format has its own codec for its own purpose. Now that we know our way around the Squeeze preset dialog, let's create a new custom preset. To do this, just click the plus icon in the Presets section. Let's create an MP4 file preset that can be playable both in Flash and on an iPhone. First we need to name the preset so that we can find it later. Let's use the main concept H.264 codec and a two-pass VBR method. We'll keep the frame rate at 1 to 1 and the data rate at 1000 kilobits per second. Because this will be used for an iPhone, we need to use the baseline or main profiles. I use 640 for the height of my iPhone videos and I want to maintain the current aspect ratio. Let's change the keyframes to 300 and my audio data rate to 128 kilobits per second with stereo channels. Now that the preset is set up, I just click OK, and it's saved in my presets. It's really that easy to make a custom preset. Chances are, Squeeze has the preset you need already, and if not, you're almost certain to find it in the exchange. Be sure to watch the tutorial on the preset exchange to make sure that you know how to use this valuable resource.